Okay, we'll get started now. So, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Tim Galway from InnoApps, and uh, I'd like to welcome you to the first of a, a series of um, webinars that we're running, um, covering various aspects of the Oracle Cloud and how it can help uh, transform uh, your business. Um, today, we're going to be looking at planning and budgeting, um, particularly within the context of uh, energy sector companies. So, looking at areas such as oil and gas. Um, oil field services, mining, natural resources, and uh, utilities companies. Um, I'll take a few moments just to run through what we're going to cover today. Um, so I'll give a brief introduction um, for the, the number of attendees uh, joining who, who maybe aren't uh, overly aware of any apps. Um, run briefly through us and our credentials. Um, do some scene setting in terms of some of the challenges we're seeing um, in the industry. Uh, and then I'm going to hand over to Nigel Yule from Oracle to give a high-level overview of the planning and budgeting cloud service. Um, we'll then do a, a demonstration to let people see some of the system um, and how it can be used, and then uh, take any questions uh, at the end. Uh, we're aiming to run through this in about 20 to 25 minutes. Um, so thank you very much for your time and attention. So giving a brief introduction to InnoApps. Uh, Get the right slide to show up here. Um, so, for those who, who aren't hugely aware of us, uh, InnoApps um, are an Oracle partner, and we grew out, I guess, of the, the oil and gas sector. And we've worked with um, many utilities and oil and gas and natural resources companies uh, over our, our last ten years. Um, we've got a strong presence in a lot of the main energy energy regions in the world. So, in the US. Uh, the UK, um, we've got presence in the Middle East and also in Malaysia and Singapore. Um, work with our customers on a long-term partnership basis, so Technip, uh, as an example, they're our first customer and they're still a strong customer 10 years later. Um, we uh, eat our own dog food, as it were. We are a strong adopter of the Oracle Cloud. Um, we've grown very fast as a business. and. The Oracle Cloud applications from ERP, HCM, and the planning and budgeting side as well. Some of the BI tools have been critical to us in our growth. So we, you know, as well as knowing what we're what we're about, we we, we use it ourselves and, and run our business um, in the way that we're we're describing to you today. Um, we were recently awarded the Oracle Specialized Partner of the Year, so the global winner in software as a service. Uh, so we won the UK award. The Europe, Middle East, uh, and Africa award, and then we were awarded the Global uh, Award, which was selected by uh, independently by IDC. Um, and we have delivered sort of multi-pillar, multi-country rollouts of, of cloud. Um, one of the advantages of working with within apps is that we don't do just um, one or two specific industries, so we get a good cross learning of knowledge. Um, for those involved in the oil and gas sector, uh, one of the, the learnings from the Wood Report um, was to take in-house in best practice uh, knowledge from other sectors. Um, one of the advantages InnoApps can bring is that we work across a number of other areas such as healthcare, financial services. Uh, engineering and construction. So we've got a lot of good learnings from those sectors that we can bring to to energy customers. And just touch on some of our clients in this sector there. Uh, for the various uh, sectors we mentioned today, so for utilities, for oil and gas, for oil food services, we have industry specific solutions covering uh, HCM, um, covering what would typically be known as ERP, the financials, the procurement, the project elements of the world, and then also solutions around the planning and budgeting. That's what we're going to really touch on on today. Um, if this this is a, an example for an, an upstream exploration and production company, happy to share examples with those of you in other areas um, who have um, different things that you would you would like to cover. So this is just a, a sample. Um, so. If you do have any queries or would like to, to know more about our, you know, the other micro verticals we work with in this sector, please let me know. Okay, so just to, to set the scene, um, you may be able to tell from my accent, I am based up in Scotland, actually in Aberdeen. Um, so for us, um, a large, uh, you know, particularly in this location, we've seen impacts of changing commodity prices very, very. Um, you know, intensely over the last 18 to 24 months. Um, but it's not just it's not just in oil and gas; it's in other sectors, so in mining, um, and then also in some other areas such as you know the 
how, how utilities are pricing gas, gas income and, and so on. So we can see here just a lot of volatility, changing in market prices, affecting things like what we're going to spend on capital projects, how are we going to manage our headcount, you know, how are we going to manage departmental costs, um, what do we do if the price goes X percentage this way or X percentage that way, what do we do uh, as a service provider if our revenue you know, profile changes on the basis of that. So that's the sort of challenges we're seeing companies seeing um, and you know, whilst we can do nothing unfortunately about these, uh, these, these large scale um, volatilities, what we can do is help customers be able to react and respond to those appropriately and see how this will impact their organization and how they can replan how changing cost profiles, how changing revenue profiles can flow through to all areas of the business and help them manage that. What we want to look at today is what the value of, of enterprise performance management brings to organizations. So I think I, I touched on it already that you know there's elements we can't control, but based on those, based on what you're expected, you know, screening price for a project is, based on what you're expected, uh, revenue is going to be um, you may want to game out different scenarios, um, should that vary, what does that do to costs and so on. So really helping uh, companies sort of correct their strategic and operational plans um, and, and also help simplify the what can be a relatively complex, you know, one-off annual process of doing a, a budget and, and making that something far more real-time and making that something far more simplified so that organizations are reacting on a, you know, a weekly and monthly basis rather than just on, a, on, an, annual, on an annual basis. What I'm going to do now is hand over to Nigel Yule from Oracle. He'll talk you through a high-level overview of the Oracle uh, Cloud Solutions in this area, and then my colleague Andrew will take us into the system and do a short demonstration. Thank you. Thanks, Tim, and uh, good morning, everyone. Um, so my name is Nigel Yule. I'm the Senior Director of Product Marketing at Oracle, particularly for, for EPM. Um, so I've been working in this area for more than 20 years. Uh, so, um, background to, to, to really what's been happening in Oracle over the last, in fact, 32 months since we released our first EPM uh, cloud solution is, is that we've been taking 35 years of experience of Hyperion and then um, Oracle um, in, in the EPM space, and we've been applying that experience and that knowledge and, and the um, uh, intellectual property that we actually have around that um, to new technology to you know, very new um, ideas and putting that, the, the, that history, that knowledge, that IP and those new ideas together in the cloud. And so say 32 months ago we released the first um, planning and budgeting cloud service, which is our first cloud service and we've since that time extended that across um, uh, more enterprise planning, so, so taking in some specific modules and adding those outside of the, the main core planning. We have um, looked at reporting, we have looked at um, the close process, particularly around the actual consolidation close process and account reconciliations, which is one of the, the, the core time-wasting processes in the close, um, looking at focus on that. And, and just um, two weeks ago, we released um, profitability and cost management cloud service um, as our latest cloud service. So, so six different services in the cloud and, and more to come, um, but certainly you know, a, a real push towards providing the sort of things that we've done for a very long time in the, in the on-premises world um, as cloud services. Next slide, please. Okay, so let's focus on planning and budgeting, which obviously what this, this is all about. Um, when we look at plan, uh, you know, planning and budgeting, and I go talk to, pick to customers and potential customers and so on, what we see is this, it's very, the, I guess the, the main thing we see is, is, is a disconnect. We see this central planning and uh, financial planning and, and analysis organization that, that may have a, a system, um, or they may be using spreadsheets, but they, they, it's very centralized in, in a small group of people. And then when you actually start to look at the real story of planning and budgeting within the organization, actually there are a large number of people outside of that central part that are doing things their own way. Um, doing them maybe in some sort of system that they've bought and they're running separate to the main system or typically and very typically in spreadsheets. So, so what the result of that is, is, is that you get 
this huge disconnect. Um, you get people doing things based on different principles, different ideas, um, different structures, and then they provide information to that central FP&A organization, they have to take that and somehow get that into the centralized system and then actually produce a forecast or a plan. Um, now, of course, a number of things happen, you know, the data gets corrupted in that process, information is not fully understood, have we got the right information? But I guess more importantly for the world we're in today is all of that stuff takes a long time. So actually, the time it takes from saying we need a revised forecast to actually having a revised forecast is delayed by all this process and disconnect and so on. Um, and really, by bringing those wide, the, all of the organisation in um, to to the to the, the to the process um, will enable you to be much more agile, more consistent, um, get commitment, get people involved, and so on. Um, but to do that, you need a system that will enable you to make, get all those people connected. And traditionally, with your on-premises systems, maybe that was complicated because of the IT infrastructure required, or it may have been expensive. Um, the cloud really changes that. Next slide, please. And what we're seeing is is that that really is being picked up. Um, you know, this concept of of, of the whole IT infrastructure being taken care of and looked after by a third party organization that's their job to do and delivering like we have done best practice out of the box, you know, delivering all of the things that, that an organization needs to do their planning um, and delivering it in, in a software as a service mode which is which is often much cheaper for organizations to, to acquire and use is that it's really being picked up. Uh, really being picked up to the point that you know, in 32 months we have over 2,000 subscriptions and over 100,000 users using our EPM um, software as a service products. So you know, in launching 14th of February 2014, really amazing take up, and we 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 ourselves have been shocked. I was saying to the, the guys from Inuax earlier that we've been actually ship uh, ship or selling more than two applications um, a day since the actual launch of the product. Um, and I think one of the key things in, in probably here is to talk about is, is one thing people get concerned about is integration. Well, you, there's some really, really strong integration um, that comes with these products built, built into this new technology platform that enables you really to connect to just about anywhere and anything to get your data. Okay, next slide, please. So what can we do? What are, what are people actually seeing and what are people doing? I think the, 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 the big push has been to move beyond that centralized financial planning. It's to move to planning across the entire organization in a connected way. So we have operational plans that are, that are developed in, in, in a line of business. It could be a, um, a, you know, an engineering plan or a marketing plan or a sales plan being developed in the same application and being totally integrated in with all the financial planning that's taking place in finance, um, with treasury plans maybe, uh, with long-term strategic plans, and all that being brought together and being able to brought together very easily and very quickly, which means that when we see a, you know, a, a, a major change in the market, you know, the, the, the fall in the pound or um, so a currency change or a um, a supply change or a particular market change, we organizations can react very quickly to those changes. They can replan, reforecast, um, have a new plan, re move resources to where they're actually needed today, not where we thought they were needed a week ago. Um, you know, apply um, finance to the places that need it, maybe change the, the, the emphasis of the organization and do that very quickly and have plans that enable them to do that and monitor that and make sure that what they're trying to do is actually happening. So this sort of concept of multiple scenarios, multiple plans, um, the ability to plan, I think also one of the things is the ability to plan in the, the units of measure, the, the terms and the terminology that, that a, a department is, is used to. So it may be that you know, we're planning in terms of uh, number of leads generated, number of sales calls made, number of barrels shipped, um, you know, the price of oil 
this month, price of oil next month, or whatever those those parameters are, they can plan in that way and through the system that's converted to financial numbers. Okay, I'm going to hand over to Andrew. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Nigel. Okay, my name is Andrew Joyce. I'm a EPM consultant with uh, Inoaps. So I specialise in, in delivering PBCS applications, which Nigel and Tim have, have talked about. So just to give a quick overview of some of the PBCS applications uh, Inoaps have delivered recently. Uh, so we've got some screenshots at the top from some workforce planning applications. So uh, we're seeing in a lot of organisations, obviously, employee expenses is one of the biggest expenses in the organisation. So the ability to uh, forecast and plan long term for volatility in the market, and how that's going to affect your workforce, uh, is, is crucial to these businesses. Uh, so we can deliver applications in PBCS, which will uh, support organisations in this process. Uh, we've also done various cash flow forecasting applications, uh, allowing users to to forecast any any gaps in bank balances coming up, etc. Uh, the whole spectrum of, of finance applications, profit and loss, balance sheets, etc. Uh, as well as in the other oper operational areas, which Nigel alluded to, and how that can all be tied back. Uh, to financial numbers. Uh, we've also got a uh, screenshot here of a, an application we developed to allow an organisation to meet the new IFRS 15 standards of, of recognising revenue. Uh, so we're seeing that as a, a key area for organisations uh, coming up. Uh, we need to meet these new standards. Uh, we can utilise PDCS to uh, allow organisations to state revenue based on different allocation methods, uh, again, to meet these new required standards. Uh, so just a, a small flavour of the planning and budgeting applications that Inarps have delivered recently. Okay, so I'm now going to go into the actual system and show you a, a quick example of uh, how PBCS uh, can be used. Okay, so First thing to note here on the interface, uh, very sleek, very modern. If any of, any of you have, have uh, used Hyperion planning on premise, for example, you'll see a, a vast improvement in the, the interface here uh, in PBCS. Uh, as you can imagine, it's it's very tablet friendly as well. All these icons are uh, easy to touch and navigate on on tablets, iPads, etc. Okay, so today I'm, I'm going to show you a, a simple uh, demonstration of uh, how PBCS can be used to uh, how PBCS can be used to, to help organisations uh, deal with fluctuating commodity prices. Okay, so I've, I've set up a, a task list here, and within PBCS, task lists are used to navigate users through. Uh, typically planning or forecasting cycles. So the user has a, a simple flow of what data they need to enter and what outputs they get out at the end. Okay, so if I click on this first one, uh, we've got a, a simple data entity form here. Okay, so allow users to, to enter forecasted prices of, of commodities. Um, so we can toggle between different commodities here. Uh, so if you look at crude oil as an example, uh, we've, we've got different versions here. So within PBCS, it allows you to do multi-dimensional kind of what-if analysis. Uh, we've got a working version here, which might be your kind of screened or hedged version that you're planning on. But we've also got two what-if versions Okay, so if the crude oil price is you know, I think it's a twenty percent lower than the working version or twenty percent higher, what effect will that have on on your numbers? Okay. 
a click onto the next task in our task list. We have here a, what's known as a, a composite data form. So these are two data forms dynamically linked. So if we make changes to the top form, we will see uh, what the results are in the bottom one, effectively. So what we're looking at here is kind of three different projects. Um, we've got what resource we think will be required to deliver these projects. And in the bottom half of the screen, we have a shortened income statement uh, and also what our operating profit margin will be. Okay, so we can see here that we've got some data validation enabled. So users can see at a glance, a uh, green, obviously, good margin, we like that. The reds, not so good. So we need to make some changes uh, to try and make this project more profitable or a better margin. Okay, so our utility is a count line here. It's tied into the commodity price that we saw on the previous screen. Okay, so I can't really do much about that. Uh, but what we can maybe do is try and reduce our compensation expense line. Uh, to see if we can uh, improve our margin here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is uh, reduce the number of FTEs uh, that we've got in that project. So I'll, I'll make quite a saving cut of halving our workforce and saving that form. Okay, so we can see the instant impact of that. Uh, we've now got a very healthy and profit margin for that project in January. Okay, so just a kind of quick, simple flavor of, of what the system's capable of. Obviously, in the real world, uh, we can build this out into much more complex uh, requirements, specifically in the oil and gas industry or any other industry that we get involved in here. Okay. So if I just go on to the next task. <coughs> Okay, so this is just to give you a quick flavour of your workforce planning capabilities uh, that we've touched on previously. Okay, so the, the previous screen was a high level of FTE required for the project. We're now into the kind of more granular level uh, of workforce planning. Okay, so we can we can add new employees um, and So select various uh, amendments of when we want this employee to start. So if we want to start them in February and start planning uh, their salary basis from February onwards. So very, very simple. Uh, a lot of organizations are still using Excel for, for this kind of thing, which is nice alluded to. Uh, you have multiple versions of the truth floating about using PBCS, one version of the truth, all auditable, uh, very simple to use for, for users, so, so very powerful. We're seeing a lot of interest in using PBCS for, for workforce planning. Okay. So on to our next task, uh, I've got a, an example financial report here. So PBCS out of the box, very powerful BI reporting. Uh, so we're, we're going to look at a, a monthly income statement report here. Um, so it's very, it can be very highly formatted, personalised with company logos, etc. Uh, we're looking at an HTML here. We can also view these in PDF. Uh, these can obviously then be downloaded, emailed out to, to budget holders. But indeed, we can automate the whole process. Uh, so we can automate, automate that process that the report is refreshed every month end, for example, uh, and then scheduled out to be emailed to, to the relevant users. Okay. So that all comes out of the box with PVCS, very powerful BI capabilities. 
Okay. And to continue on the kind of BI theme, also within TBCS, we have very powerful dashboard capabilities. Okay, so we see a lot of interest in these for kind of exec level users who maybe aren't as interested in the integrity numbers behind all this. They want to see what the top line is, how profitable are our projects. Uh, so we've got operating expenditure here. Again, the toggle between the versions we were looking at. Uh, and we can see the kind of instant impact in the graphs uh, between our versions. So very powerful, very easy to use. Uh, users can set up their own dashboards and, and share them with other users. Uh, PBCS is, is designed to be controlled by users in effect. Uh, there's, there's not a, a strong requirement for, for ad, admin uh, or IT support. Um, okay, so that's just a quick flavour. And one other thing just to quickly show you, as well as the, the uh, internet browser interface, we also, PBCS also comes again out of the box with Microsoft Office uh, compatibility. Okay, so we have Smart View uh, compatibility through Excel. So all the you know, data forms, reports that we looked at in the uh, internet interface previously are also available on the uh, Excel interface here. So we're looking at that form that we looked at previously. Uh, so if we refresh that. Okay, so we can see the, the change that we made in the application interface is reflected in Smart View as well. It's all sitting on the same S-based database, so changes made in Excel uh, and the user interface in real time, users can see that. Okay, so that's a, just a quick flavor of, of what PBCS can offer you and I'll uh, hand back to Tim just to close up. Excellent. Uh, thank you very much for that, Andrew. Um, we had a couple of um, questions just come in whilst we were running through that there. Um, just to, to recap, the, obviously the, the, the working examples we showed there from the demo system, we've, we've kept them relatively simple. Um, so you can build them out into you know, far more complex um, uh, scenarios um, and taking into you know information from various different areas of the business. Uh, on that, someone had asked if we were limited to which systems you can you can take data um, to and from uh, in, in PBCS, and the answer is no. Um, so we have customers taking information um, from SAP, from Oracle, um, cloud or e-business suite, um, from IFS, um, and then also from from other areas. So perhaps bringing in. Um, forecast costs on a project from Primavera uh, and taking them with your with your actuals from your ERP system and, and, and getting a, a few of you of a, an overall financial plan. So there's quite a lot of flexibility in terms of which systems um, you can you can pull information uh, to and from and the, the integration of that's relatively simple um, in, in all the experience of, of the ones we've done so far. Um, Another question, um, someone saying they already use Hyperion planning, um, is it a difficult migration to PBCS? Um, again, not particularly, it's a relatively straightforward exercise to move from a non-premise um, planning application to PBCS in the cloud. Um, I guess the, the couple of provisors around that being that you, know, you need to be happy with your planning model and there needs to be nothing particularly unusual or complex about them to do that. Um, We've seen a few customers make that move, and, and for a couple of them, it's been a lift and shift. They're quite happy with what they've got, and they've just effectively taken it and moved it to the cloud. Um, for one or two others, they've had, um, you know, wanted to change their planning process, um, and then effectively, it's, it's 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 a little bit closer to to a newer implementation. Um, but both of those are relatively light touch, um, and and done in you know uh, weeks to months rather than months to years. It's a fairly quick process. 
Um, with that, I would like to thank everyone for attending. Um, we've got a number of upcoming webinars that I mentioned. So uh, on the 30th of November, looking at uh, Cloud HCM and how we can energize your workforce through the downturn. Um, looking in 13th of December at Oracle ERP Cloud and five things you need to know about that. Uh, and then moving into a couple of, of, of related areas in, in the start of the new year. Um, so looking into data and how that can give you a competitive edge and uh, innovation management um, to help propel you through turbulent times. Um, you can see these events on our website. Um, so we look forward to uh, having you guys at those. And please, uh, if you have colleagues um, who'd be interested, please let them know. Um, and with that, I would like to thank everyone for attending. My contact details are on the screen there. And if you have any more questions, you're more than welcome to, to email me. So thank you very much, everyone. Cheers. Bye.